We're going to do another five, uh, five problems from the practice test. On this example, we want to simplify the expression, assuming all variables represent positive numbers. We're going to simplify the expression cube root of negative 64y to the 33rd power. When we simplify a cube root, what we're looking for is what number cubed is equal to negative 64y to the 33rd. If we can find that number, we'll simplify to that number. So let's address the constant or the coefficient separately from the variable. So we're trying to think of a number that when we cube it, we get negative 64. And that's going to be negative 4. Negative 4 cubed is 64. Now, if you don't know that right off the top of your head, you can use your calculator and start typing 1 cubed is 1, 2 cubed is 8, 3 cubed is 27, and 4 cubed is 64. So if you type those in your calculator, you'll start to get familiar with what we call perfect cubes. So 1, 8, 27, 64, these are perfect cubes. 5 cubed is 125. As you do more of these problems, you might remember that instead of having to type it in your calculator. Now we have a negative. So we need a negative in our problem. We have negative 4 cubed equaling negative 64. So if we were only doing the cube root of negative 64, that would be negative 4. So now we want to think about our variable part. So we're trying to think of the cube root. Um, excuse me, got that backwards. Some number cubed equal to y to the 33rd power. So if we rewrite y to the 33rd power as y to the 11th to the 3rd power, you can see that y to the 11th is the number that we're talking about. y to the 11th cubed is going to equal y to the 33rd. So the cube root of y to the 33rd is y to the 11th. And maybe you're seeing a shortcut that you can do here. You can take this power and divide it by the index to get the new power on the variable. So when we simplify this, we're going to have the cube root of the coefficient. Cube root of negative 64 would be negative 4. And the cube root of y to the 33rd will be y to the 11th. So we get the cube root of negative 64y to the 33rd equal to negative 4y to the 11th. On this one, we want to combine the terms if possible or enter D and E does not exist if they can't be combined. Let's try to combine the expression negative 8 cube root of 40 minus cube root of 135. Now, simplifying something like this requires us to combine like radicals. And like radicals need to have the same index. Both of these are cube roots, but they also have to have the same number underneath the radical. So right now, we can't combine these together into a single radical. But we could try simplifying each one of these radicals, and maybe the simplified version will be like radicals. So let's start with simplifying cube root of 40. 
Now, 40 is not a perfect cube. So what I'm going to do is try to factor 40 into a perfect cube and something else. So if you remember our perfect cubes, 1 cubed is 1, 2 cubed is 8, 3 cubed is 27, 4 cubed is 64. So I know that 8 is a factor of 40. I can write 8, excuse me, I can write 40 as 8 times 5. So I'll be able to simplify cube root of 40 by writing cube root of 8 times 5. And the cube root of 8 is 2. The cube root of 8 is 2 because 2 cubed is 8. And 5 is not a perfect cube, so I'm going to leave the 5 underneath the cube root. Uh, you can see that I wrote a multiplication symbol here, and that's because this is multiplication here. And so we get negative 16 cube root of 5. I'm also going to simplify the cube root of 135. So I am not familiar with the factors of 135, so I'm going to do um, in my calculator, I'm going to try to find a perfect cube that divides into 135. So in my calculator, I'm doing 135 divided by 8 because it's a perfect cube. That doesn't work. It doesn't divide evenly. 135 divided by 27 does work. 27 times 5 is um, 135. So now I'll rewrite. 135 as 27 times 5. The cube root of 27 is 3 because 3 cubed is 27. And then we're going to leave the 5 inside the cube root because 5 is not a perfect cube. So we can write this as 3 cube root of 5. So now that we've simplified each one of the radicals, you can see now that we have the same index and the same number underneath the radical. So now we have like radicals. And when you have like radicals, you can combine them. And you're going to do that math on the coefficients, just like you do when you combine like terms. A negative 16 plus negative 3 is a negative 19 cube root of 5. So we were able to simplify negative 8 cube root of 40 minus cube root of 135 to be negative 19 cube root of 5. For this question, we want to evaluate 64 to the 2 thirds power without using a calculator. Enter DNE does not exist if the number is not real. So we're trying to evaluate 64 to the 2 thirds power. And we have a fraction in our exponent. So we want to make sure we know what that means. So if we have a fraction n over m in our exponent. We're going to treat those two components differently, the numerator and denominator. The denominator is the index on a radical. So that's the mth root. And the n is a power. So when we have a fraction in our exponent, that's the same as a radical. Now well, there is another way that we can write it. We can write it as the mth root of x and then raise it to the n power. And so as we look at this, what that means is that we can apply these two in either order. 
So in this first one, we're applying the power first, and then we're applying the radical. We follow order of operations. And in this one, we're applying the radical first and then the power. So let's see those two for our example here. So we have 64 to the 2 thirds power, which is the cube root of 64 squared, or the cube root of 64 squared. Now when I solve a problem like this, I like to apply the radical first because finding the cube root of 64 is going to be easier than finding the cube root of this really big number here. So I can do it in my head a little bit easier if I apply the cube root first. The cube root of 64 is 4 because 4 to the third power is 64. And then I'll apply the power of 2. 4 squared is 16. Now I still can do it the other way, the cube root of 64 squared. I first need to figure out what 64 squared is. So I'm getting my calculator out. 64 squared it's 4096 and then I need to look for perfect cubes that are a factor of this. Now I already know what the answer is so I know that it's going to be 16 so let's test out 16 times 16 times 16 and that is 4096. We get 16, 64, to the two-thirds power is the same thing as 16. On this question, we want to multiply and then simplify completely. We have square root of 10 plus 9 times square root of 10 minus 3. So we want to multiply. and We're multiplying a binomial times a binomial. You can use the FOIL method. We multiply the first two together, square root of 10 times square root of 10. Multiply the outside two together. That's a negative 3 times square root of 10. Multiply the inside two together. It's 9 square root of 10, positive. And the last two together, 9 times negative 3 would be negative 27. So I still need to multiply square root of 10 times square root of 10. Since we're multiplying it, the square root of 10 times another square root of 10, we are allowed to multiply what's underneath the radical together. So we get square root of 10 times 10, which is square root of 100. However, in these two terms, we're multiplying a radical with a non-radical, and we really can't mix those two together. So we're just going to write that down as minus 3 square root of 10 and plus 9 square root of 10. And because both of them are square root of 10, the same index, they're both square roots, and the number underneath the radical is both 10. These are like radicals, and we can, can combine them together. So we're going to do the math using the coefficients. We have a negative 3 plus 9, which is a positive 6. Let's carry down that minus 27. And square root of 100 is 10. And these two terms here are both constants, and we can combine them together. So 10 minus 27 is a negative 17 plus 6 square root of 10. And we can't do any more combining because this term has a radical and this one doesn't. So they're not like terms. We can't combine them together. For this example, we want to express negative 6 square root of negative 16 as a complex number in terms of i. i is defined as the square root of negative 1. 
So we can simplify square root of negative 16 by factoring negative 16 into negative 1 times 16. Now think of simplifying square root of negative 1, square root of 16, and multiplying those answers together. Square root of negative 1 by definition is i. Square root of 16 is 4. And we can multiply to get negative 24i. So we've written this as a complex number. Thank you for checking out my videos. Have a great day.